blood typing. I'm going to get into the four different blood groups. I'm not going to get into the RH in this one. I can discuss that in another video. And as you can probably tell already, I got some cheesy corny ways to teach you that. So hopefully you remember. And as you can see my website right there, www.profroofs.com. I'll also have some practice sheets and questions you can download to practice later. So let's get started. Introduction to the red blood cell. All right, so there's a bunch of red blood cells here. Red blood cell is abbreviated RBC. You see that written up here. Also, if you're interested, this is a scanning electron microscope view of the red blood cell. You can tell because it has a 3D shape. Uh, very quickly here, another name for another, a red blood cell is a what site? It is an erythrocyte. And if you look at the shape of a red blood cell, you'll notice uh, there's a little dent. And there's actually a dent on both sides, both on the top and the bottom. And the dent, it goes inwards like that. And on the other side, it goes inwards like that. And then it's connected at the edge, just like that. So because this goes in, it's not called convex. Convex would be here and here. It's called con cave because it's just like pretend there used to be a wall right here it just caved in right both sides caved in by means how many by means two so one here two here it's by concave a uh, famous analogy that people like to use is imagine a donut and everybody always gets hungry when we see this including myself and it's a little jelly donut but smash in the top just a little bit and smash in the bottom a little bit make sure your best friend standing in front of you when you do that and uh, not completely but just push it in a little bit and that's what biconcave looks like so yeah next time you're at Dunkin Donuts just smash that donut on your friend and say that's biconcave that's your red blood cell okay so next if you look here there's like you know sugar or sprinkles or whatever and there's a bunch of different ones well that's what the red blood cell is like we have all these little dots on there and the dots uh, they mean something they're markers. So this could say this is an A red blood cell. We could get another marker and we could say this is a B red blood cell. We can get another one and this could have A and it could also have B. Well, obviously what do we call that? That's an AB red blood cell. And then what are we going to call it if it doesn't have either A or B? We're going to call that an O red blood cell. So again, just imagine the red blood cells like jelly donuts. You know, that's a green jelly donut or that's a blue jelly donut. You know, each sprinkle or decoration on it decides what kind of donut that is. All right, moving on. Let's first talk about antigens and then we'll talk about antibodies. So antigens, I call them the party hats or another thing to call them is name tags. For example, if you're, you know, at some sort of gathering and your name tag says, you know, Adam on it, your name is Adam. Or if your name tag says Bob on it, your name is Bob. So or you can just use the first letter A and B. If you have both of them together, right, like first and last name, your name's Adam Bob. If you don't have any of them, now you're just O, O alone or something. All right, so our four blood types, hopefully you know them by now. First there is A, then there is B, and then both of them together, we have AB, and then we have blood type O. So I'm just drawing these little uh, elliptical shapes to represent the blood cells. I try to have some fun. Uh, I put some faces on these guys, have a good time like always. And this guy, eh, he's going to have a sad face. You'll see why later on. Okay, so these name tags or these antigens, I try to symbolize them as party hats. We're going to have a party just love the parties and then uh, this guy he's gonna have a blue top hat right here he's having a good time and if you look at the bottom right the B B blue right or box or whatever just to help you remember a that's that antigen this guy over here he has that blue top hat as well too that blue box and this guy's wearing another party hat too he's wearing both of them right he has a and B this guy has none that makes him type O. That's why he's very sad. He's not a fun guy. However, the interesting thing is he can help everybody else out, but nobody can help him out. That's why he's O alone. He's so sad. 
And in contrast, look at AB. He's got both hats on. He's a big partier. He can barely even smile. He probably can barely even walk. Which means he's partying a lot. Everybody's coming over to his house to party. So he's having a good time. And this guy's upset because nobody's coming to his house. He has to go over to everybody else's house. You can kind of think of O as a designated driver, right? He does a drive and goes to AB's house, goes to B, goes to A. So he's upset. He's not having a good time. AB, he's not driving. He's not going anywhere. He's partying. He's staying at home. So just keep that in mind when we get to the universal donor and recipient. One last thing, remember the red blood cell, it's not that elliptical shape, it has that bi what? It has that bi concave shape to it, that Preston shape. Okay, moving on. Antibodies, these are going to be the haters at our party. They're going to cause agglutination or they're going to cause a fight. Whenever you have haters, you have fight. So, anti. What does anti mean? Anti means a against against the bodies, the bodies being the red blood cells. There's two ways to abbreviate antibodies. One way is just to take A and B from antibodies. The other way is IG, immunoglobulins. You can look up the spelling for that one. There are five IGs. You can remember them with the acronym GAMED, G, A, M, E, and D. And Antibodies for blood antigens are actually IgMs. So what does an antibody look like? What letter of the alphabet? It looks like a Y. Now I'm just going to draw it upside down. Here's the A and the B. And these antibodies, these haters, all right, they are going to grab onto specific antigens. So this one is going to grab onto the A and this one over here is going to grab onto the B and just to make things fun I'll give them a head well, this guy's gonna have a very small head All right. well he's a hater who really cares anyway so there's the eyes you know they're haters well what do they do let's say there is a red blood cell at the party All right? having a good time and this red blood cell is wearing the A hat well, this hater hates anti, is against the A, is against the A antigen. So it's going to go and bind and then just going to start a fight. Same thing with anti B. He's at the party and he sees some guy hanging out at the party and this guy is wearing a B hat, a B antigen. So he hates against it. Even if this guy is wearing the A hat, the A antigen, he's still going to hate him. It's not like he 50% hates him, he totally hates him. So what is this called? This process is called agglutination or coagulation right here. That's when they start fighting and they start binding and then they start clumping up. So what you're going to see, all right, I'm just going to skip the faces, is you know they're going to start to bind, there's going to be a big fight, you know, it's going to bind to another one. And then let's say this guy has a hat on this side, he's wearing a hat on his ear, he's wearing a hat on his neck. So here comes another hater and he's binding on uh, just like that. So they're going to start to clump up together and then just start one big fight in a mess. And that's called agglutination, coagulation. Why if we have a blood vessel and then you find this coagulated, is that bad? Well, it can cause a blood clot and death to the tissue if it's flowing this way. It's never going to make it down here. You can get a myocardial infarction, a stroke, you get the idea. So again, just remember antibodies versus antigens because that's commonly mistaken. Antibody against the body, the body of the red blood cell, the bodies that are having fun at the party. So now let's put everything together. We're going to talk about whole blood antibodies with antigens. Okay, I'm just calling this the homes. So if somebody has type A blood, what's in their blood? Okay, let's take the red blood cell. We have the red blood cell, it's in there. It's type A blood, so what do we call this hat here? We call this the A antigen. Let's draw in the other red blood cells. Here's the B, here's AB, and then we said, oh, we're making him a sad face. So who else is going to have the A hat? Well, if they have A in their name, type AB blood, so they have the A antigen. 
and then B, he's going to have the B, the blue box top hat, and A, B is going to have it as well too. But O doesn't have anything. He's all upset. He's not wearing any hats. No antigens. So what's the main idea when you figure out what antibody each blood type has? Well, you want to keep in mind there can't be any fighting. No fighting at home. I'm sure you remember your parents telling you that before. So we don't want fighting or the word here is agglutination and another word we said was coagulation so we can't have any of that so let's draw an antibody in here what would be the problem if this hater hated against the A, the A hat well there'd be fight and there'd be coagulation so we cannot have that happen okay let's say we have the anti B antibody in there. Is that okay? Yeah, because that's not going to bind to that. They're not going to go together. So you have this hater over here at the party, and that's fine because they're not going to hate on each other. He only hates the blue hats, not the green hats. So blood type A has the uh, A antigen and also has anti B antibody. Okay, what about blood type B? The same idea. Can we hate against the B hat? No, because we get agglutination or coagulation. Can we hate against the red hat? Sure. So maybe we could add more to this. No fighting at home, but also we want to have as much people as we can, but also, let's say, many people. So kind of the idea is how many people can you get in this house to have a party without there being any fights. So therefore, we could also have anti-A antibody in here, as well as the B antigen. Okay, AB. Can we have any haters in here? Uh, a, no, there's gonna be a fight. B, no, there's gonna be a fight. So type AB blood has no antibodies but it has the A and B antigen. Type O, there are no party hats so guess what we can have all the haters here at the party we can hate against the A hat we can also hate against the B hat we got as many people in here as we could and still there is no fight. Okay so two last things here before we continue on to transfusions one questions you could be asked if you were asked which blood type has no antibodies but both antigens, that's going to be type AB, right? No antibodies, but it has both antigens. Blood type O has both antibodies, right? It has anti A and B, but it has no antigens on it. One quick word about antibodies. If you take a look at an antibody, you know, there's a part that's going to bind to the antigen there that's on the bottom. Uh, they give antibody regions. This part right up here they call the FC region. This part here is the same as this part down here. They call it the FAB region. AB for antigen binding, right? Because it's going to bind to the antigen, right, in these sites over here. This is called the FC region because this part stays constant. It doesn't change. As you can see, this is going to bind to the A antigen. This over here is binding to the B antigen. So if you can't remember FAB antigen binding, maybe you can think of fab, like fabulous. Like these are shoes. Those are some fabulous shoes it's wearing. Okay, so I know you're judging me now. So let's move on to transfusions. Blood transfusions. I'm calling this party time. Let's shake it up. I want you to pay very, very close special attention to this step right here because this is where everybody usually messes up when it comes to blood transfusions. All right, so let's see if this works. Okay, so first, all right, you're going to draw the blood. All right, you're going to take it into the syringe, tube, whatever, and you're going to shake it up. Shake it up, set the party, you know, good time. It's in the tube, and this machine starts to revolve around. What's the name of this machine? This is called a centrifuge. Okay, so after it's done centrifuging, if you take a look down here, it's not just a tube of all red blood anymore. It's separated into different components. Down here, you have your red blood cells that make up this portion right here. That's about 45% in males, usually a little bit lower, about 40% in females. 
just because males have testosterone, which influences erythropoietin, that's from the renal system and the kidneys, don't worry about it. Then in this little area over here, this small area, they call it the white buffy coat, is where you find your white blood cells, five main groups, and platelets for coagulation. And then up here, we call us about 55% of the blood. 90% or a little bit more, about 92, 93 is water. But what matters here is this is where you're gonna find these guys. What are these guys? These are the antibodies. So now we have separated the antibodies from the red blood cells. The red blood cells, they're more dense, so they're down at the bottom. The antibodies, they're up top. So basically when you centrifuge blood, you can separate it. Otherwise, it's all mixed in together. So again, really quickly, in the blood, you have the red blood cells. They're all mixed together with the antibodies. They're not separated. You take the blood, put it in the centrifuge, spin it very, very fast, like the amusement park. You've ever gone to that ride, you sit against the wall, it spins fast. So it separates it on density. The more dense things, the red blood cells will be at the bottom, and now your antibodies are up top in the plasma. Another word is plasma, they also call it anti-serum because it has the antibodies inside it, as well as other proteins such as albumin and fibrinogen. Okay, so let's draw a red blood cell. Let's do an example here. Let's say somebody has type A blood, and then somebody over here has type B blood. So what antibodies are going to be in each of them? Well, A is definitely going to have one, B is definitely going to have one, and we talked about it. So the way to figure out is to think about the antigens. This is type A because his name is A. He's wearing the A name tag or the A party hat. Over here, this is B because he's wearing the B party hat. Now, who's going to have what antibody? A, he can have the B. He can hate against the B hat because he's wearing the A. B, same idea, has the anti-A antibody, right? This is anti a because you know he's not wearing the a hat over here this hater can be at the party with him so pay attention here the red blood cell goes to the party not the haters so the question is can a transfer to b red blood cell goes why because when they take your blood they centrifuge your blood and they separate it this is the part that you're donating. This they also called packed red blood cell volume. Or it could be packed uh, cell volume or there's different variations of it. Basically all your red blood cells are packed together. And of course another word for packed cell volume is your hemato. So when you donate to somebody, you donate this. You don't donate that part. So what does that mean? The hater is not allowed to come to the party. Just the red blood cell. So the red blood cell floats over, floats over, and he's coming over. And look, he's over here at the party. And what is he wearing? What hat is he wearing? He's wearing the A hat. Uh-oh, what's going to happen? Boom. It's going to attach onto there. And you're going to get, what's that word called? You're going to get coagulation. So can A donate to B? No, because there's going to be coagulation. What about can B donate to A? And I know it's getting a little messy, but think about it. Once that uh, cell comes over here, you know, he makes his way over here, he's wearing the blue hat. The blue hat is the blue antigen. What does A have in his body? He's going to hate, and then there's going to be coagulation if he comes over here. So no. Neither way. A can't go to B, B can't go to A. Again, keep in mind, it's the red blood cell that goes to, to the party, not the haters because we're donating this portion down here. Okay, can A donate to B? Let's draw AB's blood. So here's AB, he's our big partier. He has both party hats on. He's got the A antigen, got the B antigen as well too. So can he have any haters at the party? No, there can't be any haters at the party. So what happened when A starts to swim over, right? A is coming over, over here. Here's A down here, right? A is having a good time, even though his face is a little messed up. He's having a great time and there's no haters. So great, right? We can party. That's good. 
So yes, A can donate to B. What about the other way around? If you look at A, A had the anti-B antibody just sitting right over there. So it's hating against the B hat. So if this guy was to start to swim over, this anti-B antibody would attack that hat and there'd be coagulation. So this way, no, you can't do that. So let's do one more. Can A donate to O? So hopefully you guys are getting the idea here. Here's O, right? He's all sad. He doesn't wear party hats, right? It's because he's a designated driver, and you'll see why very soon. So if O has no party hats, remember at the home, we want as many people at the home without causing a fight. That means O is going to have the antibodies against both antigens, against the A and against the B. So once A swims over here, here's A now, right? and A is wearing the party hat, look what's going to happen. Here comes this hater right here, right? He sees A, he's all mad, he's coming down here, down here, he's going to grab, latch onto that, and we're going to get, what's that word? Coagulation or agglutination. So no, A cannot donate to O. But what about the other way? Can O donate to A? Okay, keep in mind, what's the antibody? Who's the hater at the party? So when O comes over, is anybody going to hate against O? Remember, look back here. A has the hater against the B antigen, the B party hat. So when O comes over here, oh wait, O's not wearing any hats. So yeah, that's cool. O can come over because no matter what antibodies are over here, O can go over because O's wearing no hats. So yes, O can donate to A. So again, I cannot emphasize this enough. It's the red blood cell that gets donated. It's not the haters, not the antibodies, the IGs. They do not go over. Nobody wants a hater to come to their party. Leave them at home. So let's talk about something interesting. So we mentioned this is the packed cell volume or the hematocrit. So when you donate the blood, it gets centrifuged, it separates, and this is the part that you're going to donate. Yeah, you could donate platelets, you could donate serum, but here we're talking about donating red blood cells. So let's call this like one unit right here. So if this is one unit of blood, there's a way to actually donate two units, two packed cell volumes. And they call this here a double red cell donation. How do they do that? Well, there's a machine that as it takes your blood out, it's going to separate it, it's going to keep the red blood cells, then it returns the plasma to you. It puts that plasma so you don't lose that volume because here you're losing it after the centrifuge. Here it will put it back into you so then they can pull out another cycle of blood and take more red blood cells from you. Don't worry, it's safe and it's all good as long as you're healthy. But that's called a double red cell donation and it's because that plasma gets put back into you. Okay, you got it? Good. Let's wrap this up. So I encourage you here to take the time, stop this and think about it, but I'm just going to continue and we'll fill out this flow chart. So can A donate to A? Yes. Can A B donate to A B? Yes. Can B donate to B? Yes. Can O donate to O? Yes. So you can donate to your own blood type. You only can't donate to your own blood type when you talk about the RH factor, the positive and the negative signs, but that's another video. Can A donate to B? No. Can B donate to A? No. Now we got to look at A, B, and O. What, what did we say about A, B? If we took a look at A, B, we said A, B has both hats on top of it. One right there for the A and the B, the blue box. So what did its house have? What did AB's house have in terms of antibodies? Can it have any haters inside? No, because that's going to attack itself. So what's important here is that AB has no antibodies. So basically it has no what? No haters. So everybody can come to the party here. So if everybody can come over to the party, that's awesome. That's why AB is having such a good time. Everybody's coming over to his house, even O is. All right? We got A over here. We got B over here. 
everybody's having a great time because there's no haters at the party. So can A go to AB? Yes. Can B go to AB? Yes. Can O go to AB? Yes. So that makes AB what? It makes AB the universal recipient, right? Everybody can come over to AB's house. What's the downside to that? Is AB can only go to AB's house because at B's house, there's a hater against the A. At A's house, there's a hater against the B and anybody against the B. Now let's look at type O blood, right? So this is going to be type O. So when we drew O, we drew O with a sad face. O has no hats. He has no hats. Not only that, he has both the haters at his house. He has anti A antibody and he has anti B antibody. So he has both antibodies over here. But what did we say again about transferring? What do we transfer? Who moves? Is it the red blood cell or the antibodies? We transfer, now remember this is important, transfer RBCs, not the antibodies. They don't go anywhere. So O has no hats. He's a designated driver. He's always got to go visit people. He can't stay at home. Nobody's coming. So he's always got to go somewhere. Right? That's why O is so sad. So can O go to B? Yes. Can O go to A? Yes. Even though A has a hater against B, there's no B antigen. There's no A antigen. So there's nothing to be hated on, right? There's no party hats to be hated on. That makes O what? That makes O the universal donor. Can A go to O's house? No. Because what does O have over there? O has the anti-A for that over there. Can AB go to O? No way, not at all, because it's going to be twice as hated on over there. And of course, B, just like A, can't go to O because there's the anti-B antibody to be hated on. So again, AB would be your universal recipient and O would be your universal donor. Let's practice some questions. Okay, question number one. What portion of blood is donated in transfusions? Now transfusions, I told you you can donate a bunch of stuff, but here we're talking about, let's say, blood type transfusions, not any other special type. So we have here our test tube and then we spun the test tube. What's the name of the machine that does it? That's the centrifuge. And so you're going to find your erythrocytes, your red blood cells down here at the bottom because they're the most dense. Then right above that you're going to have this area right inside here. That's the buffy white coat. And then above it about 55% you're going to have your plasma inside there. And remember, in the plasma, that's where we find our antibodies. So again, what portion of the blood are we going to donate? We're donating this part down here, that packed cell volume, that hematocrit, basically the area where we have our RBCs. So the answer would be C, the packed red blood cell volume. Question number two, can a person with type AB blood receive from a person with type B blood? Okay, so we're saying here's AB and then over here we're saying here's B. So can B go over to AB? So what portion goes over? It's the red blood cell. So we have over here, right, we have B. B is wearing that B for blue box hat. What antibodies is AB going to have? Well, let's draw AB in as well too. Here's AB. Here's our big partier. He's got that A antigen and he's got the blue. Is AB going to have any antibodies against its own hats? No. So that's cool, right? We both have the same hat. No haters. So yes, that's possible. So we have yes and we have yes, but which one is it? Let's cross these out so we don't mess it up. Because AB has both A and B immunoglobulins? No, that's not true. Because AB has no immunoglobulins? Yes, that's true. So it's going to be choice D. There are no 
haters because AB has both antigens, both hats there. Question three, which blood type is the universal donor? There's an easy way to remember it, right? Double O. I just gave you the shortcut. But what about why is O the universal donor? Is it because O has no antibodies or because O has no antigens? Well, if we draw out O, right, there's the sad face, right? No hats, it's all sad. The hats are the name tags. It's because there are no antigens. What about antibodies? Are they going to have antibodies in type O blood? Yes, for sure. Because the whole idea is how many people can we fit at that home in that body and still have no agglutination, no fight. So type O has both antibodies but no antigens. But again, I cannot emphasize this enough. Donor, when we donate, this guy goes. The red blood cell donates. The haters do not go. Because how are you going to confuse it? If you think everything goes over, then you throw the antibodies onto something else. Yeah, you're going to say O can't go because O has both antibodies. That's a very common problem that I've seen. So make sure you know it's a red blood cell that goes, not the antibodies. Leave those haters at home. All right. Well, I'm pretty much done here. So if you want uh, more questions or a review sheet, I got it on my website right here, profroos.com. When you get to the website, go to videos, go to blood, go to blood types. I'm obviously producing the video now, but you'll see it there. And then down here, I have this review sheet that you can download and the answers are down there as well too. Join me on Facebook, please. We can discuss questions of the day and also like me on YouTube so I can help make more videos for whatever you guys want. And lastly, please help support development. Anything you can donate will be greatly appreciated. And remember, you can always contact me through the website or you can email me at profroofs.com. I hope this extremely cheesy video was at least a little bit helpful. Take care.